DOTs and use DOT, uh, you know, um, uh, database. It's our pleasure to introduce to you uh, collaborators from overseas from the Democritus University of um, Thraki in Greece. Uh, we have done a lot of work together the last three years and uh, Dr. Dimitriou is very busy today, but Dr. Karaguni is going to uh, give presentation to us uh, regarding their research. So Aristi Karaguni uh, has a PhD in Sustainable Development and Management of Infrastructure for Democritus University of Thraki, Department of Economics. Master in of Science Environmental Management for Business from Cranfield University in uh, United Kingdom and diploma equivalent to four years BA and one year's Master in Civil Engineering Transportation Planning from Greece. She's currently a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Economics at the Democritus University of Thraki and in a research area of sustainable development and management for transportation infrastructure. She has participated in more than 50 publications, scientific uh, journals, and international peer review conferences. Also, she has been participating in various workshops that I had the opportunity to meet, to meet her uh, a few years ago uh, in one of the supply chain workshops in North Greece. And she has contributed in four years, I'm sorry, in four major research projects. In addition, she participates in different uh, organizing committees of international conferences that is, uh, is held every three years on intermodal transport innovations in planning, management, business development, and decision making. I will open the floor for Aristi. Aristi, it's our pleasure that we have you again to, uh, today with us. You participated in the webinar series last year with Dr. Dimitriou and his team, uh, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. So let me please share my screen. Okay, so I think you can see my screen now. Is that correct, Suhaila? Yes, yes. Great. So we are very glad to, to be here for uh, a third, I think, uh, year in a row to be part of the fMRI's webinar series. Of course, co-hosted by the WTS FAU Student Chapter. We, uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Dimitri Wendt, the whole team want to particularly thank uh, Professor Kaiser and Suheila for uh, the invitation this uh, year. So as Professor Kaiser mentioned before, my name is Aris Taraguni. I'm a uh, adjusted lecturer and a postdoc researcher in the Department of uh, Economics at Democracy University of Thrace, that's in northern uh, part of, um, of Greece. And this work, today's uh, webinar, was carried out in uh, cooperation and under the scientific supervision of uh, Professor Dimitrios Dimitriou, head of the Department of, uh, of Economics and uh, director of uh, the Markby's uh, Research Laboratory, our laboratory about management, governance, and business intelligence. Uh, and of course, business ethics in infrastructure operators and networks. So uh, this uh, presentation's uh, key goal is to provide you briefly with uh, the framework and the methodological background for developing an observatory, a platform, uh, let's say towards integration and of course, interoperability of uh, transportation infrastructure in terms uh, mainly of uh, digital transformation of this uh, infrastructure and of course all this acceleration, digital acceleration in the supply chain business ecosystem. So um, this platform concerns uh, essentially an ecosystem of raw and complex uh, data uh, to provide a large network of uh, services aimed at supporting decision supporting decision making and of course uh, many applications in terms of uh, infrastructure accessibility supply chain business uh, uh, development, many services, uh, evaluation, of course, data integration, all of them in the context of um, uh, destination marketing with more emphasis on the critical region of uh, 
Eastern Macedonian Thrace, and of course, all these remote uh, destinations. So the main objective of, uh, of our platform is to assist decision support uh, systems towards sustainability, and of course, uh, through the development of um, AI tools and uh, business intelligence uh, tools, which you know that provide uh, significant analysis over a series of uh, KPIs, of performance indicators, for supporting business planning and financial performance uh, uh, monitoring. So a little bit of uh, background regarding uh, presenters' uh, academic profile. As I told you, Professor Dimitrius' specialization deals with uh, investment uh, appraisal, project financing, project management uh, in transport and supply chain economics, management performance, and of course, strategic management, sustain, uh, sustainable development, and transportation planning. He, particip he participates in many research projects, and of course, he delivered many papers and presentations in, in distinguished uh, international events and peer review referred uh, journals. Uh, he occupied uh, in uh, uh, a professional experience of more than 30 years uh, executive positions in transport um, uh, enterprises uh, and organizations, while he delivered dedicated studies in large transportation uh, projects. He is, as I said before, the uh, director of our research laboratory, MACBIS, uh, regarding management, governance, business intelligence, strategy, and corporate ethics, infrastructure operators, networks, and supply chains. And as I mentioned before, I'm an adjusted lecturer and postdoc researcher in the Department of uh, Economics. My research field of expertise mainly concerns sustainable development and management of, uh, of infrastructure. So sorry, doctor. we know that. Sorry, Dr. Cargono. When you move to the, the other slide, we cannot see anything. Yeah. I think ah, uh, your okay. uh, PowerPoint freeze and we don't have any. We don't now? See. Yes, right now it's OK. Thank you. OK, let me. Uh... Okay, can you see the slides now? Uh, yes, I can see your uh, slide, but it is not the, you know, a slideshow. It's a uh, uh, kind of PDF. Ah, okay. Okay, so uh, I think that uh, I will uh, have it in this uh, format it's... in order to, to see the, the slides. It's okay. Uh, okay, so you can continue, yes. Great, thank you. Uh, so as I mentioned before, during the last decades, you know that the transport industry has experienced an essential demand growth uh, corresponding with all this e-commerce development and of course, socioeconomic uh, improvements. So um, a key factor that boosted transport sector growth is the regulation of uh, transport sector business ecosystem that have been adapted in, by most of, uh, of the economies where all these new business models will have been introduced, like low-cost carriers and aviation, for, uh, for example, which have generated new demands by providing connectivity to and from remote destinations, such as the region of uh, Eastern Macedonia and Thrace that I mentioned before, and of course, stimulated demand in the more mature uh, markets. So transport network today is totally different compared to the past. New uh, entries provide additional capacity by new technology uh, fleet, by larger vehicles, by expanding the transport uh, network, promoting connectivity in emerging markets, and of course, in remote destinations. So the existing uh, business environment is highly competitive, and especially in mature international transport uh, uh, corridors, uh, for example, uh, among uh, US and uh, Europe. So new alliances, have been extended, uh, taken place in transport market, promoting collaboration that, of course, um, seems with uh, risk sharing, if I may, towards viability of large transport uh, enterprises and market development, of course. So uh, in this uh, framework, we know that the Paris Agreement in 2015 provided an opportunity for countries to strengthen the global response against uh, the threat of climate change by promoting the need of uh, emissions, mostly emissions mitigation. So uh, the United uh, Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development that 
you all uh, uh, know, um, promote a series of these 17 sustainable development goals, which are adopted by all UN member states in uh, uh, the same year. So there is a growing need for more uh, sustainable infrastructure, more sustainable transport at uh, many areas of action in order to meet the needs of clients with more um, uh, quality services, connecting uh, the hubs, the transport hubs, improve efficiency, and of course, optimize multimodal transport systems. And of course, sustainable uh, transport plays a key role in achieving many targets of, um, of uh, uh, the ESG. So the sustainability strategy shows chosen by these uh, operators uh, influences highly how inter-organizational interactions affect company performance in the context of uh, sustainable development. Of course, there are changes in expectations uh, which have also prompted the rethinking of uh, methods for long-term sustainability, but the growing demands and the diverse viewpoint of, um, of, of different stakeholders for more innovative and sustainable business performance combined, of course, with um, uh, the drawbacks, the potential drawbacks of uh, transactional contracting have contributed to um, a, a new era, uh, a more effective approach to sustainability uh, performance. So, of course, we are facing a new era, a, more, a, a digital uh, transformation in all industry. Uh, sectors, and we have to take advantage of uh, the opportunities arising from this um, uh, transformation. This condition, of course, applies to transport uh, sector sustainable transition, which could and should be aligned to its digital transformation. And of course, there is a growing uh, need for value creation and um, uh, uh, sustainable transition could be a driver as it takes into account factors that uh, uh, determine the added value of transport infrastructure, uh, digital transformation. So, um, of course, when we uh, refer to sustainable development and achieving all these uh, uh, sustainability uh, aspects in transport sectors, we always have to maintain um, the equilibrium, the relevant equilibrium between climate change implications and, of course, business performance, both the demand and the supply aspect of uh, of the sector there is a need of uh, of uh, strategic planning in the field effective strategic planning in the field of business sustainability new funding and new investment tools uh, in the field of uh, csr corporate social responsibility innovation driven new products and innovation driven new uh, services and of course an effective regulatory framework for monitoring and uh, reviewing uh, this, uh, uh, this performance. We know that, uh, uh, and we understand that different stakeholders have totally different perspectives, totally different point of, or points of view and interests regarding the uh, sustainable, sustainable, sustainable transition and digital transformation of transport uh, sectors. So for example, regional government and regional governmental bodies, social institutions and uh, NGOs are mostly related to decisions uh, dependent on social values, um, impact, and of course, uh, financial performance. On the other hand, uh, uh, financial institutions and authorities are mostly depend related to decisions dependent on, uh, on financial performance. So there is a need that the perspectives and uh, the interests of uh, NGOs, of social institutions, of governmental bodies, investment and financial uh, associations, all these uh, critical, crucial stakeholders to be aligned. And uh, in this case, we can achieve this effective decision-making system which leads to uh, the sector's uh, sustainable transition. So in uh, um, today's uh, more digitalized, uh, economic companies have uh, access to more um, data than ever before. And that is a fact. So uh, this uh, data creates a foundation of, uh, of intelligence for important business uh, decision. And to ensure that employees have the right data for decision making, companies must invest and uh, are investing in um, uh, data management solutions uh, which improve um, the visibility, the reliability, 
the security of this uh, uh, of this data. So, data management is, uh, let's say, the practice of collecting, organizing, and uh, storing, and at the same time protecting an organization's uh, um, database or uh, uh, inventory in order uh, so that can be analyzed for business decisions. And as organizations create and um, consume, if I may say, uh, data um, at uh, uh, unpredicted uh, um, uh, ways, data management solutions become uh, essential in order to make sense of the vast quantities uh, of, uh, of data. So um, uh, today's leading data management uh, software ensures that uh, reliably up-to-date uh, data is always used to drive decisions. So uh, these uh, softwares help with uh, everything from uh, data preparation to uh, storing uh, search governance of, uh, of data, allowing uh, people to quickly find the information they need That's uh, fine. for, uh, <laughs> for their analysis. So um, a crucial component of, uh, of strategic uh, technology platforms um, is uh, uh, ecosystem as, and uh, specifically participants, uh, including user developers and part partners of this ecosystem. Um, these ecosystems allows for best practice sharing and for easily uh, swapped uh, functionality. So, um, in, in the shift from uh, uh, build a VS buy to uh, customize or compose, these participants are the key to uh, moving faster and more, more effectively. Of course, uh, you can understand that uh, a key area of, uh, of application of all this uh, that uh, I mentioned before uh, is uh, smart cities, which can work as a, um, let's say, uh, solution, a problem solver for many, uh, many cities. Uh, the key issues for smart um, cities application in Greece are mostly related to um, the rising congestion problems, especially in, uh, uh, in Athens, the capital city, and uh, um, uh, big uh, cities. Uh, just keep in mind that travel congestion has increased um, almost 10% in Athens, the capital city of Greece, since uh, uh, 2014. Um, air pollution and, of course, its uh, implications in uh, human, uh, human health. The Greek cities do not meet uh, WHO air quality guidelines. So. Uh, that's a big uh, issue. And of course, the uh, vulnerability of uh, human health to, to chronic uh, diseases as life expectancy uh, expected to rise by up to four years by uh, 2030. And of course, are related to uh, security from cyber attacks. Um, you can also uh, take into account that this is in top three EU countries of least prepare, prepared for cyber crimes. Uh, and of course, the connectivity of, uh, of faster uh, networks. So uh, Internet of Things, uh, technologies and services, and of course, data management, as I said before, could lead to significant economic impact in smart cities projects. Digital technologies and services can improve citizens uh, live, offering a new experience of, uh, of city services, of course, through enhanced uh, digital use cases. So these cases are related to smart parking, smart mobility services, also effective uh, data management uh, enables local authorities and regional authorities to make informed decisions and improve city management. So these services have direct and indirect economic uh, uh, impact to, uh, to the city. Um, so smart cities project, projects have a positive impact also on the local communities in terms of prosperity and of course, sustainability, as I said before. This long-term 
uh, benefits are related to critical time saving for citizens in uh, connection with uh, the city's administration, less time spent in traffic, as I said before, uh, the critical issue of um, congestion, environmental impact decrease, and of course, decreasing uh, crime incidents and increasing uh, uh, citywide GDP. So, um, a smart city is essentially a city that addresses the needs of all city stakeholders, which includes um, citizens, visitors, the public sector, the academic, the academia, the energy sector, telecommunication sector, and all this uh, stuff through these improvements in order to be more competitive, inclusive, um, to improve its uh, uh, governance, um, uh, environmental friendly, resilient, and of course, integrated. And that is, I think, the, uh, the key word uh, in, this, uh, in this analysis and in this, uh, in this session. Um, it is remarkable, if you can imagine, that uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 250 smart cities projects um, launched up to uh, 2017 in Europe and in Asia Pacific. Um, of course, uh, the maturity and the contribution of, of these projects to the city's uh, GDP uh, different are, are dependent on uh, on its uh, case. For example, uh, we can see that uh, city projects such as Dubai or Barcelona or uh, Valencia, uh, cities that we all uh, now are integrated platform projects with high contribution to the city's uh, GDP, uh, while uh, pilot, let's say, projects, less mature and less integrated projects have a much lower, uh, a much lower contribution. So um, data analysis has shown that these projects, these initiatives, need uh, a period of uh, almost 10 to 15 years before realizing their full GDP potential uh, for, for the city, which is um, estimated at 15% uh, uh, of, uh, of the city's GDP. And as you can see, this, this relevant, um, these relevant examples uh, here. So uh, the uh, smart city value chain forms a wide ecosystem, as I said before, with uh, many and different distinguished uh, possibilities for solutions and use cases, starting with uh, infrastructure services, which are related to hardware development, connectivity services, which are related to network equipment and uh, operations, uh, system uh, integrator which, uh, with um, uh, development and management of vertical and cross-vertical projects and of course services among uh, uh, different uh, uh, different industries in uh, uh, in the cities so uh, these services and these um, applications are uh, mainly categorized into four uh, uh, different uh, segments and many sub uh, segments from security and uh, telecommunications such as before uh, transport and uh, logistics, uh, building automation, and of course, all these, all the, the financial uh, services that are um, uh, critical for, for the city's development. So uh, I think that this is a great uh, scheme in order to, to visualize all these different services and all these different uh, segments, uh, utilization into the city's uh, operation in this uh, smart city uh, project. And of course, all these different uh, segments are uh, enabled by a series of different layers in order to, in order to, to accomplish this system, as I said before, uh, integration. This is the, the key uh, the key word here. And of course, platform strategy is a key technology uh, leading to smart economy by effective management of open and big uh, uh, data. This is uh, the part that we have uh, developed in the uh, Democracy University of Thrace and Pakpis Research uh, Laboratory. I will uh, show you um, have a, a little uh, demonstration in uh, in uh, the following slide. So, um, smart city strategies 
are strongly related to platform strategy development for achieving this system um, integration. And this integration is related to factors affected by different stakeholders and stakeholders groups. So um, these ecosystem participants need to be able to read and meet the needs and interests of, uh, of cities. Cities, on the other hand, need attractive and flexible financing uh, options for implementing all these uh, smart cities uh, uh, solution, uh, solutions. So smart city projects are projects with a significant uh, system integration risk, which uh, of course should be taken into consideration when we uh, will plan this, uh, uh, this big uh, project. So we understand that uh, the inclusive uh, uh, process, let's say, requires also considerable effort from uh, the most interested uh, partners involved in, in the decision-making uh, process. So, as I said before, in Democracy University of Greece, in uh, our uh, department and the MAGVIS laboratory, we worked uh, um, the three past years on the Enivis Plus project in cooperation with uh, three other universities in uh, Greece. Um, in uh, simple words, Enaris Plus is a unique and innovative national research infrastructure in Greece that supports and promotes research with a vision to be the center of, uh, of excellence in shipping, transport, logistics, and supply chain in, um, in Greece. Uh, uh, the project is uh, a continuation of uh, the NIRIS research project as a uh, unique, as I said before, research infrastructure in this uh, sector, which started in 2019 uh, and completed in late 2023. And in this context, uh, a key goal of, uh, of this project was to, to conduct uh, synergies with uh, uh, the already existing platforms of uh, the NIRIS project. Uh, it's about six platforms in the sectors of uh, transport, shipping, supply chain. Um, as you can see in the slide, the, the most significant contribution of uh, this project, this uh, uh, initiative, uh, highlighting its, um, let's say, multidimensional impact in uh, the fields of uh, research, dissemination activities, educational activities, and of course, um, networking. Uh, uh, we had a robust output of uh, almost uh, 35 uh, peer-reviewed publications, ex extensive uh, workshops, uh, events, and uh, of course, uh, this initiative has established the foundation for advanced, advancing knowledge and um, fostering collaboration in this um, um, in these fields. Um, and of course, the, the integration of uh, a specialized software and the business intelligence platform um, underscores this uh, commitment to uh, more innovative uh, solutions while um, we also established uh, a network of, uh, of experts, as you can see, and young, uh, um, young uh, researchers in order to uh, shape the future of this initiative and, of course, uh, uh, the sector. So, as I said before, a very critical output uh, was the development of uh, our research laboratory, MACBIS, um, an initiative um, mainly aimed at fostering research and in business intelligence, specifically tailored to infrastructure management in supply chain sector. Um, the, uh, by outlining, if I may, the laboratory's objectives and areas of, uh, of focus um, the comprehensive suite of topics it um, can encompass. Um, you can see in this slide um, the dedicated and pioneered advancements in management practices, digital transformation, and of course, all these uh, ethical considerations and the critical issue of business, uh, uh, of business ethics. So uh, moving quickly regarding the platforms, um, uh, conceptual uh, architecture of uh, uh, this data management platform. The platform has been designed to enhance resilience and efficiency within the, the transportation sector. So uh, by detailing the processes from uh, context 
specification to uh, risk management, and of course, uh, evaluation it, uh, uh, underscores the platform's capability to adapt, to analyze, and of course, anticipate uh, uh, ensuring a robust framework of, of, of intelligent decision making. That's the, uh, the key goal of all this, um, uh, this effort. And this approach not only addresses uh, immediate operational uh, needs, but also lays the groundwork for future advancements, of course, uh, reinforce the sector's resilience and adaptability in the face of, of all the evolving uh, uh, challenges and, uh, and risks. So, um, focusing on uh, the transportation sector's uh, aspirations, our first step in order to develop this platform was to gather the industry expectation, the, the needs, the key needs of all the potential users of our um, platform and um, have uh, an extensive process, process of uh, stakeholder uh, engagement. Uh, uh, so um, we um, analyze uh, uh, relevant sophisticated data management platforms in order and as I said before, gathered uh, industries uh, uh, expecta expectation. You can see in this slide the sector commitment for uh, leveraging data for uh, enhanced efficiency, innovation, strategic uh, uh, advancement, um, and uh, the whole, let's say, portfolio of services that the platform um, uh, offers. Of course, as I said before, we conducted and a survey in order to uh, address all these uh, all these uh, needs. Um, uh, in terms of the findings of, our, of this survey, it underscores the platform's uh, critical contribution to fostering a more interconnected and a more intelligent and, of course, responsive industry uh, landscape. And by prioritizing these um, uh, the sectors and these platforms, um, Transport sector demonstrates a, a most forward-thinking approach, aiming to, um, um, let's say, to elaborate data-driven insights for sustainable growth and, of course, uh, digital uh, digital transformation. Um, I want to to highlight the findings uh, regarding the alignment between business needs and intelligent data management. Uh, uh, solutions. You can see in this slide that uh, uh, the, the transformative potential of uh, of these platforms within the transport sectors. Um, it illustrates how tailored uh, intelligent services can significantly enhance operation efficiency, uh, strategic decision making, and of course, uh, overall industry uh, innovation and digital transformation. And this synergy between businesses. Uh, business requirements and technological capabilities of the of the uh, platform um, uh, uh, shows how promising is uh, is this initiative towards a more adaptive and uh, data driven uh, sector. So, uh, as I said, in terms of our uh, contribution, the main goal of, of this project was the development of uh, an interactive, of uh, innovative and intelligent decision support system in order to improve accessibility of uh, all critical infrastructure, especially in the remote region of uh, regional of uh, Eastern Macedonia and Thrace in another Greece. Um, accessibility to uh, cultural, educational, uh, health and transport infrastructure and uh, networks in, in the region. Um, you can see they are the first draft of uh, the platform. Um, it's accessible uh, by now only in Greek, but we are in the process of uh, 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 having it accessible to English too. So, um, as I said before, our key objectives were, uh, were, were the digitalization of data related to transport infrastructure in the region of Eastern Macedonian Thrace, and then the development of this interactive and intelligent uh, decision support system in order to improve accessibility uh, of uh, cultural, educational, health and transport infrastructure, and of course, strengthen the transport ecosystem, including consumers and businesses, including all stakeholders. 
Um, in this slide, you can give you a, an overview of how the platforms work in reality. You can see uh, that all data can be extracted in multiple forms from tables to charts and uh, graphs. Of course, the platform is free to, uh, to use. Um, and uh, we hardly encourage you to explore the platform. As I said before, it will be available uh, soon in uh, English too. Um, uh, we encourage you to explore the platform, its services, its capabilities, and of course, provide us with the relevant feedback in order to improve it and uh, get it made better and more efficient. So the, uh, as I said before, the interface will be available in English uh, shortly. So it will be much easier for international users to access the platform and of course, all its, uh, uh, all its uh, services. And in this framework, we also have developed and continue to develop a newsletter uh, series in order to disseminate these results to the national and regional uh, business ecosystem. These um, newsletter series were designed in order to serve as a communication tool, uh, keeping stakeholders uh, informed about the latest developments, the latest uh, uh, insights and success stories within the, uh, the realm of, uh, of transportation and smart cities uh, projects. Um, it's a newsletter series which aims to foster a, a community of against, let's say, um, uh, stakeholders by delivering uh, valuable content and uh, about the industry needs, uh, project updates, and of course, uh, experts um, analysis. So enhancing knowledge and collaboration among uh, many professionals and uh, in these um, uh, in these fields. So here are some uh, recent contributions to academic and professional literature in uh, international uh, book and international journals publics, published in uh, uh, accredited uh, publishers. I want to um, emphasize, to specially mention our new book that will, will be published by uh, Elsevier in early March in a couple of, uh, of days. Uh, this book uh, offers a concise and comprehensive exploration of modern airport uh, management and uh, includes uh, insights and uh, relevant studies for all this, uh, um, this field that uh, I mentioned uh, um, today, from strategic planning to customer experience, sustainability governance, uh, financial and environmental analytics, um, this uh, new book, our new book, provides practical insights and practical solutions for uh, navigating the, the complexities of airport uh, operations. So, of course, we use uh, real-world, real-business uh, examples and, of course, cutting-edge and innovative uh, methodologies. And uh, through these, uh, readers will gain, uh, we know that uh, they gain valuable strategies for and insights for optimizing performance and uh, embracing uh, sustainability in the area of uh, business intelligence and, of course, business uh, analytics. So we uh, hardly recommend to uh, have a look at uh, this new book, this new tool in um, uh, the field of uh, airport uh, uh, management airport corporate performance. Um, we will distribute it uh, when it will be launched by uh, the FMRI's uh, channels through uh, Suhaila and Professor uh, Kaiser. So, and uh, last but not least, uh, um, in terms of our forthcoming research and uh, scientific uh, activities, of course, you are all kindly invited to join the next uh, Balkan Conference on Operational Research that um, uh, we co-organize. Uh, the call of papers will be available soon and, of course, will be also dis distributed through your channels by Professor Kaiser's uh, team, who will be very glad uh, to uh, welcome you in Alexandropolis next, next uh, October. That's in, uh, in Northern uh, uh, Greece. And of course, we also co-organize the fifth International Symposium on Circular Economy and Sustainability in this uh, 
fields that I mentioned in our uh, presentation uh, today in Crete uh, next uh, June. So uh, two big uh, um, uh, in events that we co-organize. And of course, Professor Kaizen and all, all the, the team is, um, is gladly welcome. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. And of course, uh, we'll be glad to address any question or comment uh, regarding this, uh, this topic. Thank you very much. I don't know if uh, Shahela can hear us. Sorry, I was mute. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karaboni, for your presentation. It was really interesting for me uh, because right now I'm uh, working on project entitled uh, uh, Assisting Readiness of a Rural Area for New Technology. We want to discover how many percentage uh, people are uh, ready for accepting new technology. Uh, uh, it was really interesting for me. And if uh, anybody have a question, please uh, ask in the chat box uh, that I can ask to Dr. Pargoni. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I'll tell you, ask, is the platform developed the first of its uh, kind in your region? Also, the data you have available is for that specific re region in Greece, correct? Uh, I think uh, he wants to make sure. Yeah, uh, so the platform was in, in, initially uh, developed for the research program was uh, focused on uh, on this specific region, uh, the remote region of Eastern Macedonia and Thrace in Greece, uh, where uh, is also the, the base of, um, of our university. But we extend the platform capabilities right now, so it will uh, cover in uh, the first uh, uh, phase the uh, territory of uh, of Greece and then extend it uh, more through the the years. As I said before, uh, we are now in the process of uh, have the interface translated into English too. So uh, the uh, international uh, students, researchers, and uh, uh, all these um, uh, academia stakeholders could uh, contribute. Um, uh, navigate through the platform, use the data, and of course, um, giving us the, the relevant feedback about their experience in order to uh, improve the platform and uh, 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 having it more more effective in a more effective way. Sounds good. Uh, thank you. And uh, sorry, most of the students ask about certification for this webinar. Let me I explain about that. Uh, so, guys, please send your name, uh, first name and last name and email address to Atelio. Atelio is going to give you certification for this webinar. Uh, as well, uh, I want to give you extra credit for Dr. Kaiser's class. So uh, I uh, took a note for uh, your name and uh, last name. Please mute uh, uh, yourself. Uh, so yes, uh, don't worry about that. You can send uh, directly uh, last name and first name to Atelier for issuing a certificate. Is there any question? Ah, okay. Are developing countries uh, actively participating in this uh, smart city trend? That's a very good. Uh... That's a very good question. As I said before, um, there are many phases, different phases, in order to uh, achieve uh, an integrated system, uh, a holistic smart city uh, project. So, um, uh, as I said before, the, the major, the most major project until now that uh, um, successfully delivered this uh, the integration and uh, achieved this, uh, this integration. Um, where uh, big, big cities uh, with uh, a high where GDP and welfare. And is there any uh, uh, sample in the United States for developing uh, a smart city? Do you think there are? Uh, if you mean that, there are many uh, examples. Uh, Shahela, I can let me uh, show you here some of them, and uh, of course. 
I can um, distribute mm -hmm. this uh, this presentation to to you in order to distribute it by yourself in uh, uh, to your channels. And of course, we will be glad to answer to uh, any mail regarding more more specific, uh, let's say, in more detailed uh, questions or comments or considerations. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, I uh, I think I ask all of questions. So. Uh, okay, uh, I'll tell you, provide the email address in the chat box. Uh, please uh, keep in your mind, send all of information to him for certification. Uh, and uh, I, I really appreciate for your presentation. I, I, I would like to mention about the next meeting because uh, 29 in February, we have uh, the other webinar for Dr. Dimitris. So uh, all the students, uh, uh, I really appreciate if uh, they can participate and register and join to uh, the next uh, webinar. Of course, next uh, next Thursday, Professor Dimitri and Professor Shazetaki will also deliver a very interesting uh, presentation about uh, decision making in transport uh, sector. Yes, yes. So I think I ask all of question uh, and. Uh, Again, I really appreciate for your presentation. Thank you, thank you. Uh... Okay, guys, uh, everybody can leave if uh, want uh, and have a great time. You're welcome, you're welcome, thanks. Thank you, Shahela, for, for the invitation, bye. You're welcome. <laughs> But I think yes.